we can go up to 306 309 sorcery points guys 309 sorcery points <laughs> is that 50 level 4 spell slots that we can do now 49 50 51 52 52 level 4 spell slots to be used for smiting 52 yeah let's let's just look at all the rerolls that happened so this is what this build does it rerolls everything a lot of times so this is why we like Savage Attacker. And then we keep attacking him. Another critical hit. Yep. And then because we killed something, we got an extra action. Okay, another critical hit. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do have a pretty high chance to crit. Holy moly. Let's look at it. And he's vulnerable, so everything did twice as, twice as, twice as much damage. <laughs> yep go again kill that keep going kill this guy oh he's still alive not for long so i mean we can also throw a fireball i guess it's gonna try to counter spell hello guys and welcome today we're going through the best paladin build i've ever made the coffee lock paladin this build is crazy crazy good guys it has it can go up to 50 or even higher level 4 spell slots that can be used for smiting it, it has three attacks per action and it can have up to five actions per turn high armor class very high magic lots of attacks very good in defense very good in offense it's just, I don't see where this build is lacking, really. Um, yeah, so let's go straight to it. For races, I definitely recommend either going for Half Orc or using Astarion for the extra 1d10 damage on every attack roll. For feats, this is going to be using Great Weapon Master and Savage Attacker. And yeah, this build goes online at level 9, really, really. But you can, yeah, here are some options for your first 8 levels. There's a lot of ways you can play this build early game. And it's going to be okay, but... At level 9 is where this build starts to shine. Why? Because you can start using all of those spell slots that you're, you have. And you can make all of those spell slots and, and abilities at level 9. So you don't have to finish your Paladin leveling, level progression to get the most of it. At level 9, this build power spikes like crazy. Okay. So let's go through the step by step. I'm gonna hit a marker down if you wanna skip that. Just know that you have to go Pact of the Blade and two levels of Sorcerer are a must and two levels of Paladin. And again, the extra attack from the Warlock at level five, it's really, really good. And get Shield and Counter Spell. These are the important choices. Now let's go through the build step by step. And if you like the content, guys, drop a like, drop a subscribe. Comment what you think. You might be the person that inspires me to make the next video. <laughs> Thank you for watching and let's go. Level 1, I will say that you don't have to start out as a sorcerer. The advantage of starting out as a sorcerer is that you get constitution saving throw proficiencies. So you, it's going to be easier for you to maintain your concentration on spells. But you don't get heavy armor proficiency. If you start paladin, you get heavy armor proficiency. If you're playing a solo run, I recommend definitely going for the... Um, Sorcerer build. Now for spells and cantrips, again, feel free to pick whatever you want. I recommend friends if you're going to be a main the main character. It's probably something like that. What I would pick. For spells, it's shield and magic missile for me. I would go ma wild magic because the advantage on the attack roll is better than possible flight in my opinion. Now for stats, maxima maximize your charisma. I would definitely put 14 points in dexterity if, since you're starting out as a sorcerer, right? You want to be able to get the maximum out of your medium armor. And 16 on constitution, it's important so you can maintain your concentrations. We have the character, who, by the way, will not have 17 charisma, 
the character will have 20 charisma because you're gonna have 17 plus one from Aunt Ethel's boon over here and plus two from Bart's memory, so it's gonna be 20. Yep, Arcana Deception, sure, or Insight de Deception is what I would be doing. On level two, I would either pick Thunder Wave or Chromatic Orb. I like Chromatic Orb better because you can still do the Storm Sorcerer combo if you want to. And definitely Distant and Twin Spell for me. That's enough with our Sorcerer levels. Now we want to go to Warlock. Okay, so here you can either go for Fiend or Great Old One. Great Old One relies on critical hits more, but it's very useful. However, Fiend gets Fireball, so... And they also get the temporary hit points when you're fighting, so it's gonna boost your survivability as well, so... I like the Fiend better. I like Armor of Akathis, and I probably pick Hellish Rebuke at this point in the game, or Command. Always pick Agonizing Blast, and it's between Devil's Inside or Repelling Blast. Level 3, you must pick Pact of the Blade. This is really important. And for the spells, Missy Step, and you can also use Mirror Image, so yeah, keep that in mind. You get an extra country, Minor Illusion, or Bone Chill. That's what I would choose, then I would definitely get mirror image here. Okay, for our first feat, I love taking Great Weapon Master. That's gonna boost your damage significantly. It's gonna be a lot of boost, plus 10. And then for level 5, you must get Counterspell. This is a must, this is an, an amazing pick for this build. And... I would pick Repelling Blast at this point. And since we are not getting another level in Warlock, you must also change one of the spells, the one that you use the least, let's say Command in this position, into Fireball is what I would do. Or Hunger of Hadar if you like the whole darkness um, thing. And it's a very useful and control spell. I guess Hypnotic Pattern is also good, but yeah. For me, it would be between Fireball and Hunger of Hadar. Um, we continue with our Paladin levels, and I would recommend going Oath of Vengeance. Because, well, why do we go Oath of Vengeance? Because they get an ability, with your bonus action, you do extra damage with every attack, and you're going to be doing a lot of attacks with this build. Guys, this is important. Fighting style, you must pick Great Weapon Fighting. This will allow you to rerolls all the 1 and 2s, and if you combine this... With the Orcish Fury, where is it? I don't know. Savage Attacker from the Half Orc. Savage Attacks. Whenever you crit, you, do, you have an extra weapon dice. This also works with this dice, with your Smite dice, and with your weapon dice. It's going to be amazing. Especially if you can find a good longsword, and there's a few of them. For spells, most of them feel bad, but I would pin Command. Um, maybe Shield of Faith is really not that useful. Thunderous Smite is going to be useful early on. Maybe Bless, but we're going to replace that down the line. Maybe even Divine Favor, really. Up to you. Level 3, nothing changes. Paladin level 4, you get another feed. Now, you have two options here. What I recommend is Savage Attacker. When making melee weapon attacks, you roll your damage twice and use the highest result. So, what does that mean? If I'm going to be hitting an enemy, and then using smite, and then I'm rolling 2d6 from my longsword, and let's say 4d8 from my smite, I get to roll all of that, those dice twice and pick the highest number for each roll. This is amazing. This is going to increase your damage for about 1 to 1.5 for every dice that you're rolling. So, pretty good. So it does, it is, it does stack up, and we're gonna be using a lot of dice when making attacks. A lot of attacks with a lot of dice in each attack, so that's how it would work. Now for level two, yeah, maybe a magic weapon. But it is concentration. Just keep it in mind if you go for that. You can also use eight, but only use eight if you don't have a cleric with a high level spell to use in the party that uses eight in the party.
Now, if you want to give up Savage Attack here, or... Well, we have two feats right now, right? We have Savage Attack here, and we have Great Weapon Master. You can choose to give one of those up to get an ability score increasing Charisma, which, because you're going to be using the Bind Packed Weapon, will increase your chance to hit by plus one. And plus one on your damage, and it will also give you the option to use other weapons like the Devotee's Mates or the Blood of La Thunder or effectively anything else you want. And if you give up on the Great Weapon Master feat, you can go with one-handed weapons as well. Okay, and that's the build. Now, shall we make some coffee? Okay, guys, now it's time to talk about how are we going to be making infinite smites as I promised. Well, it's not going to be infinite obviously but there's gonna be a lot of smites right you're, go you're not gonna be able to run out of them and the average damage of this build goes crazy after that so let's let's start so what is the plan right if you watched our coffee log video you should know that what we are gonna be doing is creating sorcery points right from our warlock spell slots i'll also link the coffee log video because this build works really well with the coffee log so you do that, then you take a short rest, right? And then you do that again. But what you're gonna say is, Sawash, but you can only take two short rests in a day. No, that is exactly wrong, my friend. You can't just take only two short rests in a day. Okay, so right now we took two short rests and we have 20 sorcery points. But, unfortunately, we can only make up to level 2 spell slots right now. However, this is where it starts to get good. This is where we can break the game completely. So, tell me how many of you know what the elixir of arcane cultivation does. Here it is. Here it is. I said... Here it is. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, how many of you know what these, these potions do? So, let's say that I drink an elixir of an arcane cultivation, right? So, right now, I can only make level 2 spells, right? But what happens if I drink that? So, now I have a level 3 spell slot. Oh, suddenly I can create a level 3 spell slot. Or, I could even break down this, arcane, this third level spell slot into sorcery points. But, what would happen... If I drank an elixir of supreme arcane cultivation, well, now I have fourth level spell slots, which I can also create a fourth level spell slot. So the fact that I only have level two spell slots, well, from regular casting, not from packed magic, doesn't prohibit me from creating level four spell slots. The only downside is that you would have to find one supreme, one elixir of supreme arcane cultivation. Now, just since we're talking about this. Let me just let you know, guys, that I've made a table, sorcery points over damage table, and the most value you can get from level one or two spell slots. So you don't even have to use an elixir of arcane cultivation. However, if you want more burst, you should be drinking fourth level spell slots. You should drink one elixir of one supreme elixir of arcane cultivation that's going to give you the most value for burst as you can see it's 0.83 versus level 3 is 0.8 so i recommend using this if you want to do burst if you want to have a very long day go for level 2 or level 1 and effectively you would be able to do a lot with this build so now we have 23 sorcery points right but we have sir fuzzle lamp here which is sir Fa lisa Fump. fuzzle lamp fuzzle lamp which is a hireling, you can hire him from Withers. And you can just give him two levels in Bard. Accept. Doesn't even matter what choices you make. All you care about is what you get on level two Bard, Song of Rest. Use Song of Rest, and look what happens. We get our spell slots back. So we can create more sorcery points. So now we're up, up to 29. We've only taken three short, short rests, right? Respect Gale. Get him two levels of Bard. Again, we don't care about subclasses and choices because all we want him for is to do a short rest so that 
we get more third level spell slots to make sorcery points. Because additionally, what you can do is you can put on this Pearl of Power amulet and create back replenished spell slots. A level 3 spell slot. Oh, and then break down that spell slot into more sorcery points. Right? So you can do that with this amulet, Pearl of, uh, Pearl of Power amulet. Spell Savant amulet will give you an extra second level spell slot that you can use. And then you can just take it off. Oh, it stays off. It stays empty, so you would have to break down all the level 2 spell slots. And then we can also break down the level 4 spell slot. And why am I gonna do that? You're gonna say that I'm crazy, right? But then I can use the spell crux amulet to get it back. So I just got free sorcery points, right? Unfortunately, you cannot get higher than level than level four spell slots back with the spell crux amulet. So if I try to do a level five, it would fail. So 50 sorcery points, right? What I do with Shadowheart in my personal time is none of your business. So, yep, Song of Rest. Now, what you saw right here, the reason she's allowed to go over level 12 is because I'm using a mod for that right now. I don't recommend you guys use mods for going over level 12. Before at least playing the game once, as it should be. Now, what is important to note, guys, is that you can always get the gold back from Withers. So you can just keep trying until you steal all the gold back. So don't worry about failing any sleight of hand checks against him. So effectively, respecting and hiding things are free. So we did it with Astarion. Let's dismiss him. So we can make more sorcery points. Now she has two levels of bard. So she can do that too. More sorcery points. More coffee! Let's drink! Drink your coffee! Drink it! Chug it down! First, to make coffee for me. Thank you for the coffee. Yep, already 70, 74 points. That Song of Rest. But it's your choice, right? We're looking at the maximum possible. More sorcery points. Give me, give me. Now, what I would say about this build, guys. Coffee! I'm sorry, I'm getting a little bit too excited. <laughs> Uh huh. Did we get everyone? Yeah, only Halcyon and Lazel missing, but I killed my Lazel, so oops. Okay. So let's get some more Harlings. So we did Sir Fazalomp, and we we did recruit or like the Paladin build. We're doing it on a half orc, obviously, right? Because we are half orc junkies, basically. <laughs> This is what this channel is about, guys. Pick Baldur's Gate 3. Song of Rest. More sorcery points. Pop. And I think I should dismiss Will and get two Hirelings every time. That's probably gonna make it a little bit faster. Slen. Tara the die, more coffee! You get a cappuccino and you get a latte! Okay, drink that cappuccino. Do it. Again! 104 sorcery points, let's go, let's keep going. Still these two things. Actually, you, you make your money back.
before short resting. Now, Prina. Sabrina. Song of rest. Perfect. Go, Brina. Make me move. Uh, how many level 4 spells can we do? 146 sorcery points over 6. So that would be, okay, let's see, 120 plus 24. So that's 24 level 4 spell slots. That's how much we can do. And of course, if you are going for level 3, then you can do even more. You can abuse these items and you can do actions like drink more of those and then make more sorcery points 150 153 so this is a level one spell slot item hundred and fifty nine and if we drink a level one and then we do it and we go back to a level two just remember to interchange them in between every use, right? Because now that I drank a level 2 again, it didn't work as you saw. So we just wasted a, a perfectly good spell slot. What we can do right now is do an Angelic Slumber. Get a free short rest. Nope. I'll take that. Oh, we get all first and second level spell slots. That's so cool. More coffee. Ah. Question. What if I have this on? Oh, oh, baby. This works every time you have a, a short rest as well. We did it. So this actually works with a potion of angelic reprieve. No, the amulet of the spell savant amulet this is amazing when you're short resting always use it so we've missed out on well short resting with potions really not just short rests unless it's a per short rest ability Let's see My god, 220 guys, and we're, we're still going. Oof. Big money. Can we... No, I record correctly, there is a stuff that you can... Yes, here it is. So you see, I missed out. I missed out on something new. This is why you don't rush things in life, guys. Okay, so what do you want to do again? Spell Savant Amulet on. Sleep again. Two, two, four. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Two, three, two. Okay, guys. I think we can go up to two fifty. Let's keep going. More! 252! 255! I really want to do 300 sorcery points. 282! 25! Fair enough. Game is game. 301! Now, I don't recommend you guys get rid of your first level spell slots and all. And you want to be using your shield reaction spell. At every opportunity you can. Because that's going to boost your armor class by a lot. Now, we have 303 points. We can also use this second level, these two remaining Warlock spell slots. So we can go up to 306, 309 sorcery points. Guys, 309 sorcery points. <laughs> Is that 50 level 4 spell slots that we can do now? <laughs> Yes, okay, I'm saving. I'm saving this and then we're doing it. Hey, okay. let's start. 
Let's do it! Faster! Drink coffee! Espresso! <laughs> 49? 50? 51? 52? And sure, let's make a level 2 one as well. Why not? 52! Level 4 spell slots to be used for smiting. 52 <laughs> Can't get in act 3 a statue of yourself or any companion that you have and the, the person that you get the statue for Gets permanent bless in this in this build. I would use the bless for this build because we are going great weapon master Important. Let's talk about items real quick, right? Diadem of Arcane Synergy, you get this in Act 1. This will give you your Charisma modifier, extra damage if you inflict them condition. And you can inflict a lot of conditions in this game with this build. So this is going to be useful by a lot. And if you have plus 6 or plus 7, because you can get your Charisma up to 22 or 24, then yeah, this will add plus 6 on every attack roll. So this is actually quite useful, especially early on. However, if you go for Helmet of Grit, you get an extra bonus action. Now, if you use this Tadpole ability over here, Mind Sanctuary, and there is a way, spoiler way, uh, just skip like 10 seconds into the future if you want to, if you want to skip that. You can get this Tadpole ability permanently on if, spoiler, if you turn yourself into a Mind Flayer. So you can't go into a permanent Mind Flayer mode and have Mind Sanctuary always on. It's either Clock of Protection or Clock of the Weave to absorb elements as a reaction. But the best one, obviously, is the Dark Edge Cloak. Um, if you don't know what that is, it just makes you invisible after you make a kill. And you're going to be making a lot of kills. If you're invisible, your next attack comes with advantage. Now there's a few options here. Armor of Persistent, Persistence is really good if you start out as a Paladin, but it's heavy, right? If you go for Sorcerer though, I would recommend Armor of Agility or any other sort of really good medium armor. Then also there's the Helltask Armor that's gonna permanently set your armor class to 21 and you don't even have to be proficient with heavy armor. Now for Anything that gives you a plus one chance to hit is great. The, heal the martial exertion gloves will give you an extra attack. Free attack is always good. Legacy of the Masters, gain plus two, bonus to attack and damage rolls with weapons. Great, again. Helter's gloves, though, will give you an extra 1d6 fire damage on every attack. So, you're going to be doing 2d6 from your longsword, plus... How much does a smite do on level 4? 5d8 plus 1d6, right? So right now look at what, what we're dealing. 2d6 plus 1d8, 1d6 plus 5d8 plus 11. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Then for boots, Hell Dusk for the bonus action dash, evasive shoes or boots of persistence. Let's go evasive shoes. Now, for amulets. Subjugation amulet is amazing. When you crit, you paralyze, and then all your attacks are critical. And all your attacks have a lot of dice, which you're going to be re-rolling, right? Because you are... Um, well, you're going to be also adding extra dice because you're a half roll, and you're going to be re-rolling them because you're a savage attacker. So... Yeah, it's one of the best things you can do, but you can also go for face and semblance amulet because it gives you an advantage on saving throws and greater health. Again, it's going to give you a lot of HP, as you can see over here when I swap out. I lose a lot of HP, it's about 36 HP that I'm losing. And constitution is increased by a lot and you have advantage on constitution saving throws. So I wouldn't dismiss this amulet. 
If you want to go for damage though, search and sub subjugation, you can get this in Act 2, is great. Now, for rings, here's where the good stuff comes. Definitely Strange Conduit Ring. You're always going to be concentrating on a spell. And 1d4, when you crit, becomes 2d4. So this increases like the killer sweet card, because whenever you kill a creature, your next attack roll can be a critical hit. Right? Now, you could use the Risky Ring to get advantage. Can't go wrong with that. Ring of Reaction to prevent being paralyzed. Cost Ring Band for the 2 damage. And for boss, you can go for the dead shot to, re to increase your chance to critical hit or the dark fire shot bow to get that free haste so that you don't have to use potions. Now, let's talk about tadpole abilities a little bit. So, mind sanctuaring is a very good one, but also perilous stakes is great because this will make your enemy vulnerable to all damage. Right? Lack of the fire elms or the auto crit. I mean, that's a no brainer, yeah. It's Potion of Speed every time. Perfect, so now we got an extraction. And I do also like Elixir of Bloodlust, but it's three attacks. And three attacks is very good. Now, I would also bind the weapon if it's not bound. Mirror Image, level two. And... Yeah, I don't think we need anything else, really. And let's throw down a Mind Sanctuary where we plan to fight, so that should be there. Mind Sanctuary and Perilous Stakes, guys. Let's see how this build works in action. So, right now we have two actions and two bonus actions. If we get into the Mind Sanctuary, which there is a way, as we talked earlier, that you can get your bonus actions permanently being actions, but it's a spoiler, so I'm not going to talk about it right now um, for free. And then all you have to do, oh, let me just enable the reactions because I didn't earlier and I missed on some damage. Yep. So how you want your turn to be, you're going to be using your actions to do attacks and this was a critical hit. First attack. Yep. That's the damage. So that was 31 slashing, 2 acid, 4 fire. Because it was 2d6 fire, as you can see, the damage that you roll is, also, is always doubled. And you see, it's a critical hit, but he doesn't take psychic damage. And, yeah, let's, let's just look at all the rerolls that happened. So this is what this build does. It rerolls everything a lot of times. So this is why we like Savage Attacker. And then we keep attacking him. Another critical hit. Yep. Now, we don't have to use a second level smite for this attack. But, I mean, we have so many fourth level smites. We might as well. And then because we killed something, we got an extra action. Okay, another critical hit. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do have a pretty high chance to crit. Holy moly. Let's look at it. And he's vulnerable, so everything did twice as, twice as, twice as much damage. <laughs> yep. Go again. Kill that. Keep going. Kill this guy. Oh, he's still alive? Not for long. The level thing is from a mod, don't worry about it. So, I've run out of movement speed. This is why you should be casting um, Long Strider on everyone before every fight. So, I mean, we can also throw a fireball, I guess. He's gonna try to counter spell. But he failed because we, we only throw level 4 up. <laughs> um, counter spells out. Let's do a, a sweep. And a, a smite on it. Yep, he's dead. No attacks left. So, 15 attacks or 5 spells or 3 attacks per action or a spell per action. You can also do hold person. It does a lot of damage as you, we have seen it did. 260 plus 260 plus what? 
a 60 plus 60, so that was about 600 damage. And that was without guaranteeing criticals or anything of that sort. This is the build, these are the items. Guys, I love this build. This build is doing crazy amounts of damage. And yeah, I don't think there's gonna be a better build in the game, ever. So anyway, if you like the content, guys, drop a like, drop a subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Goodbye.